So, okay, I have officially restarted the recording. So hello, and I want to welcome each and every one of you to our webinar series. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about designing learning resources for online environments. Uh, I just as a reminder, I wanted to let everyone know that um, in the event that um, throughout the session, if you could please keep your microphones on mute as we um, interact and, and get things together. Why? Because, well, it helps us to lower the interference that we're going to have. So for starters, well, once again, welcome to the Facebook Live webinar series sponsored by the Masters in English Language Teaching for Autonomous Learning Environments and the Masters in English Language Teaching for Self-Directed Learning. Uh, get ready as we'll be providing you with about nine more Facebook webinar series over the next few weeks where you will get the opportunity to interact with our professors. So be on the lookout for next week's sessions. All sessions will be on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Colombian time. These spaces have been designed for you, so please, please do not hesitate to ask questions, interact with all of us while sharing your experiences as well. Remember, uh, make sure you use the chat box just in case you have any questions or comments that you want to leave with us so that we can collect that information and then towards the end, uh, halfway through the session, we will be addressing all of those questions. Uh, once again, once the session is complete, we will be uploading that information to the Unisawana fan page, Unisawana ELT fan page, as well as our website, along with you know documents outlining questions and maybe some practical answers for you guys to discuss. Okay, uh, we hope you enjoy this new experience that we are providing for you. And well, without further ado, um, please allow me to introduce tonight's speaker. Uh, the, the speakers for tonight's sessions, okay? Uh, we're going to be talking about designing learning resources for online environments delivered by professors Deanna Duran and Claudia Cero. Uh, both are um, both faculty members and experienced teacher trainers from the Department of Foreign Languages and Cultures, Universidad de la Sabana, here in Colombia, okay? Um, be sure to follow them on social media and other academic sites. I will share that information with you in just about two seconds so that you can find out more details about their academic experience, et cetera. Uh, here are some ideas about who they are. I'm just going to stick some information out here in the box for you. That way, I don't waste any time reading. Um, you guys get an opportunity to figure out who they are. This is a, a bit about uh, Diana Duran. And then I am going to give you some information also about Claudia Cero, so you get some ideas, okay? Uh, the idea is to stay connected with them, get situated, and figure out and, and interact and say hi and things of that nature as well, all right? So without further ado, ladies, uh, it's all on you. I'm going to stop talking now. I'm just going to be posting some things out here. So let's get ready for tonight's sessions. And once again, thank you very much for logging in and joining, in, joining us tonight for this particular session. Uh, all the best to my speakers, and I'll, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay. Thank you, Jermaine. Thank you so much, Jermaine. Thank you so much. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, without a problem. Yes. All right, because yes. I didn't see I didn't see the bars of my microphone moving, so I was doubting. Okay. Thank you, Jermaine. Welcome everybody. Uh, good evening. I'm glad to see in here so familiar names and also to get connected with some other colleagues. I uh, will go over some questions regarding the design of resources for online environments. So, of course, to start, we want to talk about what are resources for online environments. I will kindly ask you to mute your microphones, please. There you are. Thank you so much. All right. So, these uh, online resources belong to the uh, family of self-access learning materials. That means where those materials where learners can access without the direct instruction of the teacher. For these materials, we use Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 tools. These materials work well in combination with other approaches such as CLIL, flipped learning, blended learning, virtual learning, of course. Uh, you can use Moodle, web pages, blogs, virtual rooms, hyperdocs, and the criteria we'll be discussing today uh, will guide you to the design of materials, even uh, using other resources that don't need internet connection all the time, such as Word documents or PowerPoint presentations. So, uh, having said this, keep in mind that uh, when we design these materials, students are on their own. They are designed but when being implemented learners are on their own so let's go over the criteria of these uh, resources for online environment for online environments and that takes us to the second question claudia okay what thank you the design Sorry. what 
what does the design of learning resources for online environment imply? Okay, this is uh, an important question. Sometimes when we design online learning resources, we might believe that it's an easy thing, and it is the opposite. It is very difficult, especially because we need to have into account many ingredients in order to have a learning online material. Some of the ingredients, the first one that we recommend is pay attention to your audience. You need to consider who the learning object is intended for because these kind of self access materials are not for everybody. They are for an intended population and you are the ones who actually decide who this population is. The second uh, ingredients that we have for this recipe is the learning objective. You have to set up the learning objective for your learning material. Uh, more doesn't mean better. So if you can have one or two objectives, that's good. Because remember, the students, as Diana was saying, the students will be the ones that will be accessing the self-access material and they will be working on, on the round. The third ingredient is going to be input. So you need to decide what input will you give to, to your students. It can be something related to grammar, to one of the, <coughs> I'm sorry, to one of the skills to one of the sub skills that you want to work. Remember that students will learn the redundant with and from your learning object. So they will be learning from that object. The fourth ingredient that we recommend is to have a clear path, to have a logical organization of activities. Remember, you need to scaffold learning through the learning material. The fifth one, just to summarize, it's going to be moments of practice and moments for self-evaluation. So for self-evaluation, students need to know how good or how bad they are doing through the resource. Remember, you are not with the students. They are alone, and that's why you are scaffolding them. There are some other ingredients, such as time. It needs to be considered how long can students work with a self-access learning material. Uh, based on the research that we have done, we could say that probably a student can work maximum of time, 30 minutes, with a self-access learning material. So you can probably divide a collection of self-access learning material to develop a big objective. The other issue to consider is how to keep records, copyright issues, but we're not going to go into that. And remember, is material should be self-explanatory. So, Dianita, let's go to the next one. In which scenarios can teachers use these resources? Okay. So, in this, these resources can be used in different scenarios. So, these are only resources. Of course, we use them in virtual learning environments, uh, blended learning environments, but we can also use them in face-to-face -face environments, in face-to-face -face settings. For example, for students to prepare content before the class, as we do in a flipped learning environment, or for students to review after the class. I would uh, recommend you to keep in mind the nature of the program, if it is a blended program, face-to-face -face program, virtual program, and also what the needs of the students, as you were saying, that learning profile, that those learning needs, and my intentions as a teacher, how and what do I want to teach? That's what I would say about these scenarios. So they are, you can use them in, in so many circumstances. Okay, now let's go to our next question. That is, how can teachers provide feedback in online learning resources? Let's say that so far we have met, found a lot of different tools that can provide feedback for students. Remember that feedback is very important because students need to know how good or bad they are doing. There are some uh, tools, Web 2.0 tools or Web, web 3.0 uh, tools that can also and give students the right or the wrong answers. They can give re responses and even the rational, but the simplest ones is to provide students with checklists or rubrics, at least a parameter so they will know how good or bad they are doing. A, check, a simple checklist can be an excellent feedback resource. Did I include vocabulary, for example? Did I include three sentences, for example? So these checklists will help students to monitor the, how good they are doing. If in a more controlled environment, teacher can interfere, for example, in a discussion forum. So they key can be part 
of the discussion forum and he can provide feedback to students. Other ones can be providing contact information to students so they can email you and they can send you the questions or you can give also feedback via audio or feedback tools. Good. Thank you, Claudia. That's really important because uh, self-access materials are usually used or are often used outside of class. So giving feedback is really important. Now let's see the, the next question that is, what is the teacher's role in the design of vulnerable resources? So I always say that the teacher is that mastermind behind the resource. The teacher is the one who considers, uh, well, what you just said, Claudia, all of those ingredients that are uh, uh, involved with the pedagogical implications of the design. We don't want teachers to believe that they have to be experts on the use of technology. I would recommend to start to get familiar with a couple of tools that you feel very comfortable with that, uh, of course, uh, meet your learning and teaching uh, needs, and then eventually keep on exploring more, more tools. So be young than uh, this person who is an expert on technology and who can list a wide variety of tools. The teacher is that person who can take some decisions in, in, in the use of the resources, who is able to evaluate what's available on the web and who's able to design having all of these ingredients in mind. Oh, it is not. Okay, we go. Easy, it is not an easy task. Oh. Everything I was saying. Yes. <laughs> now that you're talking about not an easy task, we go to our our fifth four questions. What challenges might teachers face when designing resources for online environments? Let me tell you that a lot of challenges will be faced when you want to design an online learning environment. Number one is time constraint. So there is something that you cannot. Uh, eliminate and it is the time. So you need time to design a SAM. Generally, our, we tell our students, our graduate students, that they need to initially design on paper, not using the tool. It's just on paper that you design. And this one for two reasons. One, if the tool it uh, disappears, for example, or if the tool requires that you pay some money, so you might lose your your learning resource. But if you have it in a Word document, you can have your learning resource forever. Other suggestions that we usually have for our students is working together. If you work with a colleague or with a couple of colleagues, you will have more resources to produce and you will have the opportunity to recycle these resources. Any other strategy that we have implemented in our master's program is creating a bank of learning resources. At the beginning, when you create your first learning object, it will be very hard. But little by little, you will have two, you will have three, you will have four resources that you can implement and use with any other students in different moments. The other concern, as Diana was saying, is the inclusion of technology. It might be a, a difficult thing to test all of the millions of resources that we have in the ocean of internet. However, as Diana was recommended, take it easy. Just take the ones that you actually know how to use. Take the ones that you actually know here for what they are intended for and start using them. Little by little, when you design yourself, you can explore other resources and you can start including them. Remember that master the tool is what you actually need to do in these, in these uh, learning resources. So one uh, piece of advice is take it easy. Take one step at a time. Take one step at a time. And the second advice that we have for you is always design on paper because we don't want you to lose tremendous work. So design on paper first, so you will have your draft, you will have lots of idea, and after that you can go and start playing with uh, technology. Okay, Claudia. So we usually use these resources. So we usually use these resources because of the many advantages they have. The good thing about these resources, as uh, Claudia was mentioning, is that we can use them more than once. 
uh, we can recycle these resources. We can go always over the resource, edit them, uh, improve them, um, also that we can work in teams, probably find a person who works and who teaches in the same context so you can join forces and design these resources together and use them in your classes. Um, also, you can yeah, these resources have allowed you to build a bank of online resources once you start uh, creating and designing many resources. Also, uh, we have advantages in the learning process. Research has found many advantages in the learning process, such as autonomy, uh, motivation, also, the students can move at their same, on their same uh, pace. Since uh, uh, these resources and students can access anytime they want, they can always go over the content. They can always, uh, if there's an audio, they can listen again if it was not clear, watch the video again, answer the questions again. So they will go and move at their own pace, and then moving at their own pace, they will all reach the same objective eventually. Uh, we also say in the program that these resources might be good for research purposes. When I was studying my master, I designed one of these resources and it allowed me to keep data and information because of the use of, of technology. So uh, it even I could even uh, count the number of times my students attempted the activities and how effective the activities were. So there are plenty of advantages of using these resources. So I think we have uh, time, for, time questions, I guess. for questions from the box. Yeah, I think we have already talked and say uh, uh, like an outlining the ideas of self-access resources and resources for online environments. We would like to hear from the audience about your experience and if you have questions or what you want us to talk about. What about the teachers who are joining us? Do you have experience designing resources for online environments? Luisa? Uh, Diana, I don't know if you happen to have a microphone. Can you tell us about your experience while you were taking the graduate program on this particular issue? Diana. Diana? Yes, hi, Claudia. Hi, Diana. Hello, dear. How are um, you? Very good, very good. Pleasure to hear again. <laughs> okay, welcome home. Thank you. Um, okay, actually, for me, online resources are very useful. What I learned the most in the master is about the importance of the design of the material. And nowadays, because now we have to teach in this virtual mode, it has to be very clear. It has to be very structured, very scaffolded in a way that the student is going to understand what he is going to do the instructions must be very clear so in that way this kind of materials online material can be very useful that it's very important the design the instructions the content that you already know very good your students that the level of the of the material is according to the students not very not to have a lot of words uh, i mean it has to be done in a very clear and interesting way So Thank in you, about feedback, uh, we get a good uh, experience at the master with that, what the thesis is about, because we were studying about feedback. And a good way that feedback could be done in, during these days is to acknowledge students about their own process, but they have to be aware of their mistakes, not only to receive a grade, not only to say, okay, this is good or this is bad, or my grade is 
three or four, I mean, to know what is my mistake, and but the student has to know that by himself, like to give him all the steps in order for him to identify the mistakes and overcome the problems. Diana, and I'm certain that you were doing very wonderful re learning resources. Angie is asking about uh, if we know any online resources because she doesn't have any experience on this. I have copied on the chat a bank that we have created with the students like you, Diana, and with other graduate students that Diana Duran has also had. So we have been working with those students creating like a bank of resources. So there you will find a long list of resources that you can actually start using in order to organize your SAMs. And Angela, uh, there are three pages in the last pages. There are some examples of learning objects created by students. All right, Claudia, about this, um, <clears throat> this inventory of resources is really useful. We have been collecting them for several semesters already, as you were saying, with our students. Uh, however, I would suggest that the teachers in here to always analyze them critically because since they have been there for a while, to make sure that all of them work. And also, I'd like to share here, um, well, an article that's going probably to help in the task of evaluating which of those materials are best for what they need is a checklist that can help them with how to see the criteria that they need to evaluate those resources before using them in their classes. Thank you for sharing. So let's see any other questions. Excellent. Are there any questions? Luella okay, says she's not an English teacher, but I can get design idea. So, Luella, can you span on that? Do you have a microphone, Luella? Si, sí, senora. Can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can hear you. Hi. Um, well, I'm not an English teacher. I am a Spanish teacher. Um, so that a lot of what you shared with me uh, via this spreadsheet would be uh, things that I would have to look at to model myself because my kids wouldn't be interested in that kind of thing. But what I would like to ask though, do you guys find that it's useful to use um, games in teaching students at the level that you teach at um, in terms of students who are already, they're, they're not children anymore, they're big people. Uh, do you feel like games uh, could be a strategy or could be a thing that could be applied uh, that could not only interest them but keep them uh, keep things that they learn in memory, have them commit things to memory. Danita, do you want to answer? Uh, yeah, well, about games, yes, I read that that games help a lot in when teaching. And for learning, because well, it definitely increases motivation, and there's also criteria for for implementing gamification in the classroom. Um, yeah, however, yeah, you need to also uh, follow those those ingredients that would be needed for gamification. I know, uh, if, and also to decide. And, and the purpose of the, the teaching purpose and the body, pedagogical purpose of the game. If is it to practice in class or if you want to go over a whole routine of games in your class for students to gain the word and, uh, oh, and well, and, and like a routine of games in your class and to give input and practice and gain awards and all of this that is in that gamification implies. Something else, uh, Claudia, you can think about it, about games? Yes, I was going to say about uh, our list of ingredients, and it is attractive. Games are very attractive. That's why our learning objects be attractive too for students. The other issue that I was thinking was giving students options. That is why they like games. In our learning objects, if we can start giving students options, they will also have a good time with the learning resource. So let's say that we are, we are 
English teachers or language teachers. We are not IT teachers, but we try to include technology into the process of learning and teaching. So we can use certain characteristics of games, for example, into our learning object, like choosing the options, like playing on different resources, so students will actually enjoy learning with your learning resource. Okay, Jermaine yeah. is telling us that in case that you happen to have more questions, you can use the chat. So we still have mm -hmm. some time. So please. Hey, Claudita, about games, I wanted to suggest this tool that my graduate students are using a lot these days, that they have different kind of games to ask questions and to learn through games and to, they can embed them into their resources. And you can copy the link and paste it in web pages and in different other platforms. Hello. 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 Hi, this is Marta Caballero from Bucaramanga. Uh, I would like to say that, thank goodness, uh, we can enjoy the perks of being an English teacher or an English professor in our case, um, uh, because um, we have standards, because we have frameworks, and because we have been around for a long time since English is the language of the most important um, towns on earth. And, and people on earth. So uh, we know there are there are tons and tons of uh, wonderful resources um, that we can count on online. And uh, most of them have proved um, great benefits for our learners. And so uh, I would like to ask you uh, um, when 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 studying in this program. Um, is there any a specific project you work on with the students uh, on the, on uh, guidelines or or steps or or line of action or I don't know like a protocol in order to design these online uh, resources? Do they become experts at doing so? Okay, who was this? Marta? Indeed. Marta in our from Ukraine. Yeah, Marta. Hello. Indeed, in our class, we have two classes that are regarding the design of self access learning materials or online learning resources. Diana Duran, my colleague, and I are professors in this course. What we intend to do is to give the students a lot of opportunity in order to learn how to design, because creativity is the end. So let's say that we start with the criteria, uh, partially the one that we mentioned today, and uh, through the classes, you will kind of start experimenting with certain resources in order to start creating your own designs. Uh, meanwhile, you were speaking, I was thinking about the amount of resources. Yes, there are a lot of resources on the on the way, but we need to test them and to actually know the benefit they may have to our learning process. So let's say that they have other purposes, but you can, with your creativity, actually share it. So Marta, I don't know if I answer your question, but yes, there are two classes in the master's program in which once we guide you to design your own learning resources. And of course, uh, these are, as you can see the names of our master's program, there is a line of research and some students have actually done their research project using learning objects. Ah, okay, Claudia, yes, I got it. And since you said it at the beginning of, our, of this uh, lecture, of this presentation, uh, what we have to keep in mind, first of all, it's uh, our our students, the audience, uh, who these oh, yeah. resources are designed for. So yeah, of course, there is a lot, and, and, and sometimes, most of the time, we have to adapt and we have to to make sure they are suitable for them. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. I like. There is a, there is. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I like to add something to Marta's question about my experience teaching in the master, and I would to clar I, and I Thank would you. like to clarify. But this is a process. So we study like today, we were very fast on the criteria, 
But in class, we study this, we start designing, getting feedback is really important in the process. Not only feedback from the, from the well, from the professors, from the tutors, but they also share with their colleagues uh, their resources and they get feedback. So an, an important point when designing is to have other colleagues to pilot them. And then at the end of the day, ah, yeah. of course, to ask your teachers, to, to ask uh, your students, once the students use it, students to use the resource, and then you can ask your students and you can evaluate the resource. And it's constant feedback, you know, reflecting on your teacher and reflecting on the results you can get from the, from the, uh, from your design. Yeah, it's an ever-ending process, we know, in education, or words that way. Okay, thank you. Yes, okay. there's never something, there's, ne there's never a perfect design, there's always room for improvement. And I also would like to share exactly. uh, this one uh, that our students from, uh, from the program uh, wrote uh, a short article uh, that was published here in the TESOL Columbia newsletter. Uh, we call it a toolkit because in there they were uh, reflecting on all of these experiences after designing three different resources for all over a semester. Okay. Yeah, so it's Lina, a change we are not having the 2020 meeting organized in August by the British Council because I was I was really um, uh, looking forward to to getting a lot more of uh, input from international experts on this topic because it has a lot to do with what we are discussing now, but I guess there will be some other time, right? There is a problem with your connection. Uh, in the chat, and we, we have had some it. interesting um, resources, so probably you can go back. Hello? No, I was just telling you that in the chat, some people have posted interesting resources that you can actually start using. Some of you mentioned the quizzes or the Quizlet mm -hmm. that are interesting to use as a game and a way to learn. So those are interesting resources. Remember that the target, as Diana was, Diana Univio was saying, is the objective that you have with your resource and the intended population. So yeah, and here they have uh, Andrea is sharing a tool that is called warworld.net to, to create games, Quizlet that is similar to Kahoot, but with some variations, like worksheets, quizzes. Yeah. And then I said to take into account the SMART goals when designing the material. Yes, the goals about that. We would also recommend for students uh, when we design these uh, learning resources, I mean, not to confuse tools that are the ones that we have in here in the chat with the with the learning resource that provides, that provide us with everything, with the input, with opportunities to practice and with feedback. And, and in there it's important to have clear, clear goals. Like uh, we recommend uh, teachers to design these materials, uh, making sure that at the end students can have a visible product so they can evaluate themselves at the end. Okay, what about this question, Claudia? Do you know about any peer and self-assessment tools for online environments? Uh, what I usually do is to design checklists. I design the checklist on my own, very simple checklist for my students to follow. I have proved this. Uh, I have proven this for uh, giving peer feedback on speaking and on writing. As Claudia was explaining, clear and simple questions that will help students uh, to check if they have in included in, in their product what we ask them to. 
Uh, did I use vocabulary for describing people, for example, in a very elementary level? Uh, does my composition include a topic sentence? Uh, does the topic sentence have ingredients one, two, and three? Uh, I also, well, we give them a range for them to check if, if they have it and also to provide them a space for evidence so they can reflect on their own, on their own learning. Something else, Claudia, that you might probably think no, about? I, I agree with you. I was just thinking about uh, you have to make the, the difference between the classroom and the use of this uh, online learning material. Our intention is to be used as a self fact learning material. So you can use it either at the beginning of the class. Diana was talking about flipped learning. So you can start using it as part of this flipped learning version of teaching, or you can use it as reinforcement for those students who you actually see that they are low in the process that you are given. So be careful about thinking about this kind of strategies that we usually use in class with these learning resources, because generally what we want is to have an individualized learning in a way that you can actually support a student's learning process. I was checking here in our repositorium, the university repositorium, some uh, research projects that had carried out by some of our students regarding the use of self-access materials. So let me see if I can find some others so I can actually send you them so you can actually check the way that's to create those uh, environments. Germain was telling us some minutes, he was sending us an article or something about how to foster language learners' autonomy. This, since our master's program, uh, uh, their emphasis is on autonomous learning environments and self-directed learning. We pretend and we develop and we want to develop autonomy in our students. So that's why we have called them self-access learning materials. So uh, materials that can actually be used by the students without the intervention of the teacher, at least in a certain part of the process. Yes, Claudia, I'd like to highlight that this uh, article was written by a student from the master program. The article that, that, that you're Yes, that's what I'm doing, trying to send articles from our graduate students so you can have an idea on their perceptions on how these online materials can actually help them to, uh, to support their teaching and their learning. Mm -hmm. Any other question, any other comment? Sure. Let me, uh, sorry, Germaine, just share with all of you the intellect on the repositorium of the university. There you might find some resources that are for teachers to be used. And you also have our graduate students' uh, thesis, research reports. You will find them very interesting and useful for your classes. So there is a section that is called resources so these are kind of resources created for a uh, it is called recursos educativos digitales abiertos recursos educativos digitales abiertos so you will find some of them that belong to the department of foreign languages and cultures so you will use them you can use them with your students and also in the other one that is thesis de grados you will find the work that our students have done Okay, German. Okay, ladies, well, thank you so much.
much for intervention tonight. I'm not sure if we have any last minute questions or comments. I see some of us are still coming in and out because of internet connections and things of that nature. But mm -hmm. I think the information was pretty clear. We got quite a few, I should say, tips and ideas related to, I should say, say what? Uh, designing learning resources for online environments. Just kind of recapping on what some of you have already said. Uh, I saw that Martha was very um, and insisted in saying that as well as Deanna and a few others. Uh, basically what? Yeah, we design resources for our, for our students. Design resources for our students and meaning that everything that we have in our classrooms, we need to always remember that it needs to be adapted because that particular activity task was not designed for my students. And lots of times we feel as if we have to use what we have in the books or we have to use what we have because, well, the schools, the universities, etc., they have invested tons of resources. Yes, we have to use them, but we need to know how to use them. And by knowing how to use them is when we have to adapt, organize, or even modify the resources that we have. But keep in mind that your classroom, as well as mine, the resources are not designed for Jermaine, Claudia, or Deanna. They were designed for the ideal student meaning that we will always have to consider, once again, what's the objective at hand in terms of my pedagogical objective and what are my students, cap my students capable of doing so that I can actually do one thing or the other. So like I said again, um, thank you so much, uh, Claudia and Deanna, for once again sharing some insights about, once again, designing, I should say, learning resources for online environments. Uh, there are lots of tools out there. What we talked about tonight was only just the tip of the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg, okay? Only a few things, and there's so many other things out there as well. And the idea is that, once again, that information coming and, and, and figure out what we got going on in that particular instance. Uh, I'm just sharing here some of the some of the social media with them so that you can once again stay in contact with them because what we like to do is hear from you. We like to hear from you. We would like to once again continue to interact with you because you have so much experience that you also bring to the table. Uh, today we're talking, but hopefully tomorrow I can get a chance to hear about Marta. What are you doing and things of that nature at your schools, at your institution, your universities, etc., related to the same topics. So it's always good that we continue to to maintain relationships relationships, especially professional relationships, so that we can do so much more, okay, in that particular instance. Well, just to kind of close up, once again, thank you for, for joining us tonight. We're going to print coming to the end. Remember, the video will be uploaded as well, so that you have an opportunity to either share the video with, with colleagues or do something else with it as well. Uh, we also, we greatly appreciate your attention, and we really hope that tonight's session was productive for you. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about, our next week's session is going to be talking about, are you a self-regulated learner? So we're going to be talking about a bit more about self regulation. Last week we talked about the autonomous learner, tonight we're an autonomous learner and the autonomous environment. And then next week we're going to be touching a little bit on what is called self-regulated learning in terms of um, by, I should say, Liliana Quest in that particular instance. So, so stay tuned in that particular instance. As always, we will be sending you to your emails uh, a short brief questionnaire as to how the experience was here tonight. Uh, what can we improve on? What are some other topics that you're interested in listening to so that we can move forward and, and get some ideas done in that particular instance? Um, like I said again, Thank you very much for your participation. Um, your your feedback is always, you know, once again, very important for us. Uh, we're going to find a link for the online materials proposed. Uh, Frank, what we're going to do, um, there are many resources that were talked about tonight. And um, in the document that we have for this week here, we are going to be listening, uh, Frank, so that you can actually have access to all of them as well. Give me one second. So let me check and see if this is the one here. Here's another one. Yep. I have it right here, and so uh, I think this is the one Frank is talking about, Claudia, as well as this one here. Okay, sure. Yes, the next week, next meeting is going Excellent. to be next week. Yeah, no worries, dude. That's the one. Okay, that's the one you're looking for, Frank. Super. Yeah. So next yeah, week, yeah. We're... <laughs> awesome, buddy. So next week we're going to be talking about um, we're going to be talking about I should say self-regulation. Okay, because we're going to be talking about it next week. So Luisa, hopefully. Tell us when. Yeah, it's going to be next week, uh, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. Colombian time. So hopefully I get a chance to see you again, Luisa Fernanda. Yeah, hopefully we get to see you again. Super. So uh, without further ado, thank you very much for having us. I will be sending Dal a short, um, inter um, I should say, survey to get some ideas about how things went. And your feedback is always, is always important for us. So once again, thank you very much. Uh, have a great night and we look forward to seeing you in the next round. Okay. Okay, uh, Adriana just told us she's going to be sending also the link as well. She's going to be sending you the link.
to, to access the information as well as the, 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 the survey so that we can, you know, get some information from you as well and you provide us with some intel as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Take care.